Oh, that's cool. Thank you. <laughs> I feel like you could taste someone with that. I know, it kind of looks dangerous. Yeah. yeah. Trust me. Should I be this close to it? Or? <laughs> oh, we can move it a little more. Uh, back. <laughs> I feel a little more comfortable. I feel better now. So, um, since this is sort of a, a new beginning for the library franchise, yeah. can you tell us about your character and your special uh, gift that you bring to mm. Yeah, I, I don't know so much. Uh, so much, uh, I would say Ezekiel Jones is who is the character that I play. I wouldn't say he's so gifted as he is. Just an absolute troublemaker. Um, he brings a side to uh, the story that um, pretty much represents stuff that necessarily you don't want to do, um, whether it being morally wrong or anything like that. Um, but you need to do it to get the job done. So for me. Uh, to come and play someone like that, where in real life I'm generally a pretty tame guy. Um, it's kind of, it was fun. It was a lot of fun. So, yeah, he brings that kind of, uh, that, I'm trying to find a, an appropriate word for it. He kind of brings that um, kind of bad boy side to things, if that makes sense. He's the anti-hero. So, um, yeah, I, I don't know if uh, fans will take to that, but uh, fingers crossed they do. I guess we'll find out December 7th, but, yeah. Uh, in the in the panel, they talked about uh, you being sort of the the greenie. Yes. Uh, and that you kind of caught a little bit of um, bit of bit of flack. Bit of flack. Can yeah. You tell us a little bit about that. Were there pranks played? Yeah. No. I mean, not so much pranks. I think uh, they would uh, on occasion tell me the wrong things on purpose so they could see me fail. But no, uh, all in good fun. It was never for anything serious. And um, I came in understanding that. I knew I was going to, especially being the youngest, uh, just turning 21 this year, I'm, I knew that I was going to be made fun of. Um, I think in the library there's a, a rotary phone and I was just kind of checking it out. I hadn't really seen or used one of those ones where you... Yeah, and, um, <laughs> and I remember, uh, I think it was Christian comes over and Christian goes, yeah, we used to have cords on phones. <laughs> they used to have wires. Just wanted to let you know. And I was like... Thanks, Christian. I knew, I knew that, but yeah. So um, yeah, and I, and I kind of—it's funny as we go along. Um, as as the show went along, I kind of got to a point where I was comfortable enough to throw some flack back, and um, yeah, we kind of we love each other for it, and it makes and it makes it interesting and it makes it fun, and and yeah. Um, but it was never anything serious or anything like that. They would uh, just get me to say funny things in my accent and things like that. Um, Actually, uh, there was uh, an issue with uh, my name was already uh, registered with Screen Actors Guild, so we were coming up with a new name, and for days I got called uh, Koala Newton John, uh, <laughs> Rockadale Jackman, um, Johnny Wombat, um, so yeah, we had a lot of fun with that kind of stuff, but nothing that I ever took too seriously or anything like that. I, I actually, actually found it quite funny. <laughs> that sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. Has there any been, uh, has there been any scenes so far that have been like your favorite that you filmed? One, I feel like it was all, uh, the entire four months was kind of one big experience for me, but if I had to single out any particular scene, uh, you'll get to see later on in the season, um, I have a very fun scene with John Larroquette, and to get to work with an actor of that caliber, I mean, they're all amazing actors, the entire cast, but to get to work with him day in, day out for an entire week was, uh, was amazing so that that particular episode I think um, was one of my favorites and and there's one scene in particular that you'll probably watch and you'll go that's probably what he was talking about but um yeah John Larroquette I mean he's one of the kings of comedy and and, and to do a comedic show with him for my first project like I'm pretty stoked yeah I'm very grateful too because you're the bad boy of the show sort of <laughs> uh, do, do you get a lot of comedic uh, Moment. Yeah, I, I'm kind of the witty one-liner, kind of the, yeah, Snarky. bit sarcastic, yeah, yeah, absolutely, um, which is, uh, in, in real life, I'm very kind of, <laughs> I'm so, like, you know, relaxed and whatever that it's it was so fun to play something like that, and, um, yeah, I think uh, as far as things like comedic timing and stuff, I had an enormous amount of help from the cast, and, and uh, by the end of it, from episode one to episode ten, I feel like I improved as an actor leaps and bounds. Uh, I'm, I, I felt like... Uh, I learned so much and, and you know, I, I feel like I can only get better, so um, for me to, uh, yeah, like to work with guys like John there, get, it's still kind of, even right now, sitting in front of you guys, I'm, I can't believe it, like, yeah. Well, how 
How do you like filming in Oregon, Portland specifically? Love it. People there are so weird. <laughs> so strange. And I, and I love them for it. Um, I come from Melbourne, which is like just a very straightforward town. Yeah, I mean, it's, I mean it's, I'm not saying it's not colourful, but it's definitely not as colourful as Portland. So I remember I, I walked, I, my very first walk around the, the streets just to get to know my neighbourhood a bit, um, there were these guys with like pink mohawks holding cats on their shoulders. And I don't know what that meant or signified, but it, it, I just went with it, you know, that's kind of, that's cool. I'll, I'll get a cat and a pink mohawk, but um, yeah, no, it, was, it was good fun. Portland's great. And I think uh, I just mentioned before, I think Portland, to film my first thing in Portland as opposed to LA, kind of uh, really helped me ease into the industry. So, you know, as far, you know, just in terms of having, not being around industry types every day and things like that. So, yeah, um, but um, yeah, I'm living in LA right now and I love that place too. I think I just love America as a whole. Yeah, you guys, uh, all I do is eat tacos and go to Lakers games. So, <laughs> it's an interesting life. So on set, did any of the actors sort of take you under their wing? Was there anyone that sort of... Yeah. I, I, I mean, uh, to an extent, all of them. Um, very, very specifically, I uh, feel like Noah took everyone under their, their wings, but me more so just because I was the new face. Um, I got a lot of advice from him when he was on set. Um, Christian was amazing. Lindy and Rebecca would both take me out to dinners and, and you know explain anything that I might need to improve on or anything like that. Um, not in a bad way, just you know it would be me asking how I could better myself. And then they always had you know kind of tips and tricks and advice. And the entire cast coming into a cast where everyone's I'm not going to say older, but more experienced than I am. Um, as opposed to coming in, you know, with a bunch of 21-year-olds that have never done anything, I felt like was an advantage to to be with the cast that I was with. So yeah, uh, they all kind of specifically, I would say, they all took me under my wing. But more specifically, uh, I guess Noah. Yeah, absolutely, and and Christian too. Absolutely, uh, all of them. All of them. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they were great. Oh, and John Larroquette, obviously as well. Um, who by the end of the series, I mean, we're best mates now. I, I love him. I love him to death. Uh, what would you say has been the hardest part easing into the industry? Ooh. Mm. Um, probably talking about myself. Um, don't want to put you guys on the spot. But, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, I come from a town where, in Melbourne, my boys back home, if I talked about myself this much, I would, they'd smack me in the face. <laughs> you know, like I'd get a punch in the arm or something. But, um, yeah, coming up here and, and kind of the new experiences are I have to be more self-aware, things like that, um, which I didn't need to be back home. It was just a case of, you know, hit up the beach whenever, go, you know, play dodgeball, basketball, football. So, yeah, I mean, uh, here it's like I need to be more careful um, now that I'm in the industry, so to speak, now that I'm sort of past that threshold of I'm now working. Um, the biggest challenge has been just everything to do with myself. And as... Uh, as uh, Noah once told me, Michelangelo would say before uh, his work, he would say, um, he would pray to the Lord, uh, please remove me from myself so that I may please thee. And uh, I, I felt like that really spoke volumes to me as far as you know me being my biggest obstacle. And it definitely is right now still to this day um, because I still don't know what the hell I'm doing. Um, and I kind of just follow Christian and... When he's not around, I'll just cry. So, I mean. <laughs> How did he get into it? Um, Ezekiel is the kind of guy, he's too curious for his own good. So, I feel as though, uh, I don't know if this is the official story, but I feel like he played um, a very, uh, very, very, like. Sorry, he, um, I played him as though he kind of, when he sees something that interests him, he'll do everything he can to get be involved in that. And I feel like maybe he watched some, some crime shows or maybe read some sort of headlines about Stolen Jewels. I know that the character's loosely based off a character, uh, a real life character, um, who um, he stole a jewel in Europe, I believe it was, um, for the sake of just proving how bad the security was at that museum. Uh, he didn't need the money, he didn't need any, and, and I find that that's very much Ezekiel. He's too curious for his own good, um, and it gets him in trouble, but um, thankfully he doesn't have moral boundaries. <laughs>